Let's see, with the help of our model, what is this nerve? This nerve is the longest nerve in the body. It is a mixed nerve, meaning it has the ability to give sensitivity and provide movement, which are the main functions of nerves. Some are motor and some are sensory, and some are mixed. And now, with the help of the model, as I was saying, we are going to show you the root of this muscle. Well, as you can see there, the nerve leaves the lumbar area where it is born in these roots, part of the spinal cord and, let's see, let's make it clear. There it is. It arises from these nerve roots that come out through these little holes here, coming from the spinal cord. L4, L5, L5, S1, those roots and S1, S2. Here, these three roots form the beginning of the nerve that is born divided, but united. Two divisions come out, but they are joined to lower areas. Okay. It comes out of there, as I was saying, in a fairly thick cord and will follow this path. It will come here and will exit through this hole called the sciatic hole. It is a virtual hole that comes here and will go towards the back of the leg. At this level, it will pass under an important muscle, the piriformis muscle, which can be one of the compression causes we will talk about later. Well, the nerve comes following this level to the back of the knee. At this level, it will already separate into two different roots. On the one hand, the tibial nerve will separate and on the other hand, the common peroneal nerve. In turn, these nerves already divided into tibial and common peroneal will have their different divisions. The common peroneal will divide surrounding here, behind the head of the fibula and will roll towards the anterior part of the leg and will divide into the superficial peroneal and deep peroneal, and will provide innovation to all this anterior and lateral side of the foot, the instep, the hollow here between, where we put the flip-flop finger. And it will also provide movement to many of these muscles apart from sensitivity. Then, the tibial branch, what it is going to do, will be to give sensitivity and matricity to all these posterior leg muscles and very importantly, sensitivity to the entire sole of the foot. Compression areas of this nerve. As we can see, the nerve has a very long path. As you can see, it originates from the lumbar area, passes through the hip, knee, and towards the ankle and foot area. Therefore, it can be compromised in different areas, at the level of the spine, where a hernia or protrusion can compromise the nerve, at the level of the piriformis, which is the image we have there that we said passed behind that muscle. If that piriformis muscle has a spasm, we can suffer a compression of the nerve. Compression can also occur at more distal levels, further away from its origin, due to a rupture of fibers of the hamstrings that creates inflammation or scar tissue that compresses the nerve, or due to a fracture of the fibula. As you can see, when the nerve divides into the common peroneal nerve and this, in turn, into its branches, it surrounds the fibula. A fracture of the fibula can cause compression of this nerve and can also be compromised at more distal levels, in the calves. For example, a rupture of fibers of the calves with a great inflammation at the ankle level, due to a sprain, for example, which can force branches that are already specific to the common peroneal nerve, the superficial peroneal nerve, and the tibial nerve. How does the physiotherapist evaluate this nerve? How can it be evaluated? 
When we have pain that may be related to this cause, there are two tests that are usually performed, the straight leg raise test, which you will see has been done to you. It involves lying on the table and lifting the straight leg passively without bending the knee and verifying if symptoms appear. And another test that is usually done is the slump test, in which the patient is seated with their hands behind their back and in a slumped position, and then the therapist will lift the leg and verify if that provokes the symptoms. These techniques are based on the tension of the nerve and the verification of the symptoms that the patient reports having. Tense the nerve and if it is compressed, it will reproduce those symptoms that we suffer from. Finally, there is a diagnostic test par excellence, which is electromyography, which will measure the nerve's ability to conduct electricity in different areas to see if it really has a good signal, and if the signals reach all the areas that should be reached by this muscle. Lastly, muscle strength tests could also be performed to see if there has been a loss of strength in muscles that have motor connectivity. This nerve provides motor ability to these muscles, and if they do not reach well, weakened muscles will be seen. I hope it has helped you understand a little about the path and functions of this nerve. When you talk about the sciatic nerve, you will already know a little about its path, what it is for, what it is like, and you will have a clearer idea of what the causes are that can cause this pain and, with the help of your physiotherapist, if necessary, you will be able to solve these problems. Remember that for more training, information, and physiotherapy advice in our channel Oncilus Health,